Greetings, scholars and stats enthusiasts. Now let's drop the formality. Welcome back, guys. Rafael here from Unip Education, bringing clarity to complex concepts, or at least I hope so. Today we are dissecting ANCOVA, a statistical scalpel that slices through data to reveal the true impact of your independent variables. What does this mean? Well. Nothing much, to be honest, is basically just like partial correlation or any other statistical tests where you had a covariate. What are covariates? Covariates are like little demons that are skewing our data or like, you know, variables, concepts do not live in a vacuum, do not exist in a vacuum. And we need to control for possible confounding effects. And here is where ANCOVA is our savior is like an ANOVA but you know a bit more dissecting a bit more investigating whether everything is actually what we have on our Jamovi is there really no effect from any other variable is there really no external factors involved well with ANCOVA we can find out of course ANCOVA in a pretty sturdy a uh, literature review so we know all the possible variables there but anyway so uh, let's fine-tune our analysis together quick recap first of all ANOVA stands for analysis of variance our go-to methods for comparing means across multiple groups how many you know already I've made so many videos at least three groups otherwise yes t-tests uh, it tells us if there is a statistically significant difference, but not why or, well, how. And here ANCOVA comes. Analysis of covariance. It's ANOVA, but with a twist. And no, it's not mixed ANOVA. ANCOVA adjusts for variables that might cloud our results. The pesky covariates. This allows for a clear view of the true effect of our independent variable on the dependent one. Think of a covariate as the background music in a movie scene. It's not the main actor, it's not even the second main actor or actress, but it sets the tone. In our case, it's a variable that could influence the dependent variable, but it's not the one we're testing. Imagine you see an uh, argument between two main characters. If you have a humorous music, well, it probably will get a very different vibe across compared if we have, for instance, like a very dramatic or very ominous soundtrack. Well, that's what covariates kind of do. Anyway, as with all statistical methods, remember, assumptions are always the foundation. Normality remains our baseline, you know already. Almost as a decity, ensures equal variable across groups, you know this already. But we have something new for ANCOVA, and that's that covariates must correlate with our dependent variables. If they're not dancing at the same tune, ANCOVA loses its rhythm. Sorry, terrible joke. How do we check that? Well, correlation matrix. That's a no brainer. All right, and let's groove after this to the effect size. Eta square is vital. It doesn't just show the effect of our independent variables, it also informs us if our covariate is changing the tune of our results significantly. Or at least, you know, somehow. Now, uh, we also have two different kinds of means. We have adjusted and unadjusted means. But what does this mean? Picture this. Two versions of a song. One with background music, one without. That's our adjusted and unadjusted means. ANCOVA gives us the remixed version of our data controlling for the covariate. Up to you which one you prefer, with or without music. How do we know if our covariate is a hit? Well, we look for significant changes in our main effects and shifts in eta squared when the covariates enter the mix. A significant shift? A cooling shift, a paradigm shift, let's assign our covariate deserves a spotlight. Now, let's jam with the real data set. We have three groups of students, freshmen, juniors, and seniors. 
we will examine how their final exam scores, our dependent variable, rock out when we adjust for anxiety levels, our covariance. Alright, stay tuned and brace with me as we read through this Ninja movie, ensuring that you are equipped to orchestrate your own research symphony. First of all, we do not have correlation in the assumptions of ANCOVA, like in the Jamovi log. So we will have to do it ourselves. We go to regression, correlation matrix, anxiety, and final exam, and drum rolls. They are related, significantly related, and directly, because this is positive, meaning that they're going in the same direction. After this, we go into ANOVA and ANCOVA. We have it right here. All right, first of all, our first step must be checking the baseline ANOVA. So, not considering our covariate yet. We have our fixed factor or between factor, which is our student, and we have the final exam, our dependent variable. As you can see, well, let's do the assumptions first. I don't want to, you know, uh, skew your opinions in not checking the assumptions after saying how fundamental they are. Homogeneity. Normality, there you go. Respected, not respected. Less than 0.5, we report it, whatever. All right, so as you can see, in our first step, we do not have a significance. It means that there was no significant difference between students in their final exam grades. Well, that's great. Or, well, if they all passed, that is, of course. However, before we go into the covariates, we will have to check all to the marginal means. And trust me here, we put on tables and we have our means. Now, unfortunately, Jamovi does not allow to have two separate uh, sets which are like, you know, for instance, just moving around. So if you're, if you're in need of these tables for your research, for your thesis, for your homework, you gotta save them now because they are unadjusted, so without controlling for our covariate, without removing the effect of anxiety. So, now you save them, or in alternative, if you want. However, I do not recommend it, because the commodity of doing this is absolutely unprecedented. But, if you want, you can do another ANCOVA here, and you will do the same. So in this way, you will have oh, the assumptions, keep in mind. In this way, you have both under each other. However, I would personally not recommend you this because it's, it's much quicker to check like this, but that's up to your preference, of course. All right, so as we said, it is squared, pretty low and not significant. So now enter anxiety or, well, exit anxiety in this case, because covariates means removing their effect. And da -da -da, we have significance now. What does this mean? Well, obviously the covariate had an effect, but let's try to examine a bit more in depth. So, before we had, as I said, very low it is squared, which doesn't mean anything because it's non-significant. But anyway, non-significance. Now we have significance when we remove the effect of anxiety. This means that anxiety, when is removed, allows students to significantly differ on their final exams. Additionally, we see that our covariate in this tab is indeed significant and it has played 0.914, so 91% of the effect was due to our covariate, to anxiety. Probably low anxiety or high anxiety if everyone failed, for instance, right? Maybe they had a similar teacher and very anxiogenic teacher, but the spike and well, everyone was super anxious. And as you can see, even our means changed, of course, because our covariate is still impacting this uh, marginal means over here. If you remember before we had around 69, 67, and 68, and now we have 60, well, almost 69, 69, and 7, 67. This still slightly changed. So you can say in this case that our covariate played an effect because of two reasons. 
first of all the eta squared changed now eta squared for this one like this the effects of students like different like you know freshmen juniors and seniors it's still very low it's like one percent so doesn't make much sense to even like you know consider it too much but we can see that before it was even less it was 0.05 percent it is now it reached like you know one percent but that small achievement but at the same time we can also ensure that our covariate is uh playing a significant role because our significance changed and it is still significant over here as you can see and it has a very high eta squared so you can save now these new tables and you will have adjusted and adjusted means as well. And that's a wrap on our Uncover Jam session. Remember, the power of analysis isn't just in the numbers. It's in understanding the symphony between variables. Keep these assumptions in check, tune into eta squared and let the data sink. If you enjoy the statistical serenade, drop a like, hit subscribe and stay tuned for more from Unip Education. Until next time, keep the data playing and the insights flowing. Raffaele out.